Hello everybody, welcome to the channel, this is Mr. Killshot here, and today we're going to be going over the Browning Buckmark URX and Stainless, and on top we have a Feiyachi V30 Red Dot equipped on top. So this is just going to be more of an overview, not an in-depth review. So on this channel for items that have been reviewed plenty of times in the past on YouTube, I'm just going to be giving a brief overview. If you want to know how to take it down or the trigger pull or anything like that, there's plenty of other reviews on YouTube that can give you that kind of information. I'm just going to be giving you a rundown of these two specific items here and uh, how they've held up for me throughout my time with them. So this was the very first firearm I ever got. So me personally, I got into firearms from a prepping standpoint. And in my opinion, the very first uh, firearm you should buy in that regard would be a 22 pistol. A 22 LR because it needs minimal skill for you to use and maneuver. Ammo is cheap, so you can have plenty of ammo right away. And in a pistol format for concealment. So that is why I got this firearm. So this is one of Feiyachi's higher end red dots. It's uh, been reviewed very thoroughly. It's held up very, very well. Uh, it comes with a honeycomb um, flash hider as well. That's one thing I really liked about it. I believe this is supposed to have an auto on feature, but to be honest with me, it's never worked. So that's the only downfall I can say about this optic. Uh, the battery compartment there, the battery compartment there is very good, very easy. So. This battery actually went on me in the range, so I'm just going to change it. I thought I'd just do it on video just to show you guys how easy it is. So you pop the battery out just like so. Or maybe it's not that easy. Well, as you can see, the battery is... Uh, oh, the battery just heated itself there. The battery is in there pretty secure. I'm going to get a new bad boy in there. Pop her in. Screw her down. And she should be good to go. Let's take a look. And just like that, there we have it. So let's just go over the brightness uh, quickly. So if I put it all the way down, keep in mind on video, the dot size is misleading. So here I'm pushing it up, sorry, let me push it down. So that's the max. So as we go down, so the dot is actually, uh, it looks uh, the same size, but more faded on video. But in real life, it is a bit smaller. It's a bit, it's not a perfect circle. I'm looking in here, it's kind of like a blob. So it's not like the best red dot you'll ever find. But it is a dot and it shows you where you need to aim to hit your target. And that's good enough for me. This red dot is held up very well. I've had it for about uh, four months. I've had one battery in there the whole time and it's worked very good. I can't say enough good things about this red dot. Uh, it's a 22 pistol, so holding zero is not something uh, you'll need to worry about, but I believe it's been reviewed on higher calibers and it holds for zero very well. It comes with a raised, uh, raised mount right here, so you can still use your iron sights as you can see there and it comes with these little tabs here so it's very easy for adjustments if you take it out or unscrew it you can see here you can just easily position it and then you can turn left and right up and down and your adjustments are very easy so as far as this optic goes it's been a great optic i'd recommend it like i said the auto on and off feature i think is included but it did not work on this but for the price you're paying, uh, you can get this uh, for around $80 Canadian. Great price, you know. I got this idea for this uh, setup right here when I saw a Ruger at the gun range and had a hollow sun on top raised. I really like the look and I like the idea that you can still use your iron sights as well. And this is a great setup for, uh, for this uh, pistol right here. So that's what I've been using. And to go over the gun briefly, so I've had this gun since July of uh, 2021 current date is March 6th and it's been great honestly the thing about Browning is the way they feel and their build quality is just exceptional so this is a gun that feels extremely good in the hands the slide is just solid everything about this gun is solid so if you hear that it just feels very good um, you can lock it up here so if you're carrying it and uh, it's loaded and it's chambered you can uh, pop it up like that put it down good to go so in my opinion if you're going to buy a 22 lr pistol 
you have to really stick with something like a browning buckmark or a ruger and the thing is because of the pressure from the bullet needs to be strong enough to move the slide back and if you have a 1911 type of slide you're gonna have to use specific ammo that's high velocity that'll have enough pressure to push the whole slide back from the top from those uh like the gsgs or uh some of the other ones that have a 1911 style so if you want reliability and the luxury to use different types of ammo and standard velocity ammo you're really gonna be having to go with either this uh a ruger a ruger um mark 4 mark 3 or anything of that side anything of that type or a revolver so i did have a 22 revolver but i i didn't like the sights on it they were just uh not very good so i ended up selling it but for a 22 pistol you know i think this or ruger is really your best option and if you go with the urx you get the full top rail there so you have a ton of real estate and to me this was honestly the best option the ruger definitely wins in terms of customization but i've actually researched this uh uh aftermarket grips and that's one thing i think i will change is uh get some grips on here but as soon as you do that you know it's all good um the iron sights here i've never changed i've never adjust them but they uh, appear to hit very well but the thing with 22 lr is very ammo sensitive so different types of ammo will hit differently but the iron sights work very good they're adjustable uh the front one here is uh very good as well it's very easy to see the sight picture and yeah, I can't say enough good things about this gun. So uh, the mag release is also very simple and easy to use. You just pop that and it drops off, very smooth. So like I said, browning is just quality, you know? And that's why I really like uh, this farm right here. And uh, in terms of reliability, so when you use this gun, you can go about like 200 to 500 rounds without cleaning it but when you do go a long time without cleaning it you will start having a uh, cycling issue so this slide it will, it will not um it'll fire but the bullet might not eject all the way and i found what you want to do is this part right here if i can focus it it likes to get gunked up this little feed ramp so if uh it gets too gunked up that's what causes feeding and cycling issues but this gun, you know, it, it uh, eats everything, it shoots everything, and it's extremely reliable. So one more time, this part right here, it gets gunked up. But if that's not gunked up, uh, you're good to go, you know. Uh, the slide is very easy to pull back. It is in, uh, got some grooves in there, so you pull that back. Very, very easy. And that's pretty much all I can say about this gun. So very, very good gun and uh, I like it a lot and optic is great optic is very very good on there and yeah that's pretty much it so what I wanted to do with this video is just kind of give you guys a brief overview and also give you an idea of uh, what kind of ammo works with this gun and what kind of ammo doesn't and I did some shooting at my one of my ranges and the groups are gonna be at 17 yards with uh, various types of ammo as you see here so let's get into the results okay so let's talk about the ammo so this gun has uh, cycled every single ammo I've ever bought for it one exception being SK standard plus which is SK the yellow box um, that gun would not eject the bullet so every time I fired I'd have to manually take the slide and pull it out to eject the bullets I'm not too sure why uh, I believe the velocity is the same uh, around a thousand feet per second there but it just did not want to eject with this gun so when you're buying premium 22 LR ammo, what's the difference? Um, the difference is usually I find is in uh, consistency. So I believe these brands spend a lot of time uh, with QC control and making sure that everything is the exact same spec, powder to how it's put together, to the materials. And I believe that's really just the biggest difference is uh, QC control. Uh, so if you look at the more expensive bullets, so here we have the Ely Contact. Uh, a lot of the SKs and Ely's, they do have a wax coating to help with feeding. So if I kind of scratch this a little bit, uh, you'll see a little bit of the wax coating. This one doesn't have too much. And then the other thing also notice just by handling these is when you turn them, uh, they're very secure. They don't move around. And that's what I'm talking about when I say quality control. And then you have the cheapest one, which is this one right here. And this is a Winchester bulk pack. So it's 333 or 555. You notice if I go like this, you can turn it. 
so it's not a uh, very secure in there and also when I buy this pack there's usually about two or three that are literally just empty like the shell will be there the case will be there with no bullet or no powder so that's what that's what I mean by quality control uh, this is a hollow point one and um, if you take a look at like a mid-range like let's say the blazer so here we have a blazer and then once again this one is secure but some of the blazers you get uh, you'll be able to turn them as well that's not to say that the Ely or the other ones you won't be able to turn uh, they still will turn once in a while but I found just from my inspection throughout my time handling these bullets they are very secure and uh, they're all built to the same spec uh, I try to include a different uh, range of bullets and see what kind of works best with my gun but to be honest you at the end of the day you know you don't need to buy any more expensive stuff if you just stick with blazer or you know any anything basic you will uh, most of the time have no issues at all and uh, this is just for people that are let's say you have a rifle that likes a specific kind of SK or kind of Ely or you are a competition shooter and you already have one of these ammos and maybe you wanna combine or buy one of these uh, SKs or something bulk and you wanna see if you can uh, make it work with your pistol as well I just decided I should do an overview and uh, show you what's worked best with a gun in my opinion so yeah, that's the, these are the different ammo types I've tried. I did try more in the past, but I um, I ran out of them, so this is just what I had left. And uh, let's go over the results. Okay, so let's go over the first uh, the first set of ammo here. So at my local range, um, I shoot at 17 yards there. That's the maximum I can. I do have a second range for 25, but uh, I would deal with uh, 17 yards for this test here. So as you can see here, these are some of the results. I measured in centimeters just to be a bit more precise and I can get more down to uh, specifics. So here, disregard this one, this is just a zero test at 10 yards just to make sure everything's going good. Um, so with this test, I uh, shot at two different methods. One was using a shooting stick and the other one was resting my hand on uh, a container. So this is the shooting stick um, results right here. So what I found out is Ely is usually king in these uh, comparisons when it comes to the brown and buck mark. So if you look here, you will see Ely contact. I think this is probably one of the best uh, besides a wild card, you'll see later. So here you have Ely contact at 1.5 centimeters. So when I talked about consistency, this is kind of what I meant. You know, when you shoot your gun, you're not really going to be getting too many flyers if you uh, get a good batch of a certain of the more premium ammunition. Uh, the Guila, so uh, there's some standard velocity and there's uh, the higher velocity one. So standard velocity is usually around a thousand feet per second. The Guila, let me check here, 1,255 per second. So this is a higher velocity. And um, with a higher velocity ammo, there's usually more flyers I tend to find. So as you can see here, there's one flyer here. Uh, with the Guila, you use a four centimeter in total. You take out the flyer, 2.3. This was the Ely Force. The Ely Force is also high velocity, but it's very consistent. So if you have a rifle or other guns and that you like uh, high velocity in some of your other pistols and you're considering buying the Buckmark, Ely Force is probably the best premium high velocity ammo that you can go for. SK Flat Nose also shoots very good out of the Browning Buckmark. So this here with the little flyer there is 3.3 centimeters. Uh, this shoots very good out of the Buckmark and other groups have tried in the past. Going over to the next page, this is the red SK rifle match, and uh, this did not do very good on this on this pistol. I did not really get too many good groups with the SK rifle match, as you can see here, 3.3 centimeters. Blazer outperformed it at 2.6, and so I, I did all this with the shooting sticks. But just to get your rough idea, with uh, without a shooting stick, because most people, you know, we're not going to be shooting uh, the pistol shooting sticks too often, so. As you can see, without a shooting stick, the group opens up quite a bit with a blazer ammunition. And yeah, those are those results for these specific group. So the wild card here was the Winchester cheap ammo. So for some reason, it shot very, very good here. So pretty much touching all the bullet holes. I mean, all the holes are, are touching. These are one inch squares for reference. And uh, yeah, just without this one, one off the side of you, this is probably the best group out of the bunch, I would, uh, I would think. Uh, mini mag is always a great great option uh, you can go wrong with mini mag 1.9 centimeters very good group this is the s and b ammunition so i never seen this ammunition until very recently and that is this box right here 
this is just a standard velocity uh this is uh, i'm not i only shot this literally only these five shots here so i'm not too experienced with this um with this uh cartridge here but it's a very nice well uh, well built bullet you know they even have the stamp on the bottom there very nice bullet i believe it does have a wax coating on there so you can see the wax coating uh, it's very well built, very well put together. Didn't really have the best results on the buck mark, but uh, I'll be trying this in the, some of my rifles and seeing how that works out. But that's the SMB. Uh, it's a bit more expensive than Blazer, less expensive than Ely and SK. Interesting option to try out. I would recommend getting a box. Standard velocity once again. And then we have the Ely action. This is a really, really good. Um, option for majority of pistols and rifles I would say uh, 2.5 centimeters so not the best of the best but it's a very consistent uh, batch of Ely a very consistent batch of Ely I'd recommend Ely action and it's also the cheapest it's a bit cheaper than four so standard velocity Ely action is one of my best ones one of my favorite ones and then here we have CCI standard so this was a flyer the guy beside him was shooting a shotgun I flinched and then uh, these were the other two groups I mean the other four four bullets so I made sure to redo that one just to be fair and you got 2.5 centimeters so if you're thinking about buying the brown and buck mark and uh, you want to just hit the ground running those are the results for the different types of ammunition if you already have a rifle with one of these ammunitions uh, you can be guaranteed that they will cycle well on the brown and buck mark and uh, you can feel free to buy them in bulk if you see a good deal or anything like that and that'll pretty much wrap the video up guys so once again i really love this pistol you know i honestly have a personal attachment to this pistol first firearm i ever got i've shot it much more than any other pistol that i own any other farm that i own and it's just beautiful you know the gold trigger kind of sets it apart you don't see that too often uh, it feels good in the hand it feels good holding it it feels good shooting it uh, very solid the build quality is just great phenomenal listen to that very good so even after shooting I would say about uh, two to three hundred rounds uh, this part right here it's not even really gunked up too much so it gets really gunked up sometimes but even after a couple hundred rounds I would say I'd say maybe 200 rounds it's not too gunked up on the other side here you can see the firing pin this also gets gunked up here it's not bad at all so I probably should have another two to three hundred rounds and then clean it up a little bit. Uh, when I clean my guns, I always clean them uh, with the Hobbs cleaning solution, and then after that, I just put some oil. So when I oil this gun, I just kind of put a little bit. I use a Q-tip when I oil my guns, put some oil in the Q-tip, and then just kind of run it over here, inside here, a little bit of oil inside here, and then just on the slides a little bit, uh, but you don't want to overdo it. There's also this little rod in there that I like to oil as well and yeah that's pretty much it this gun is very easy to clean i have never taken it apart because browning recommends that you do not take it apart so i've never had a reason to do so uh it's kind of a tedious process to take it apart so i've never done so but yeah that's pretty much it guys thanks for watching and i'll be signing out